When I recently reviewed the Mavic Air, I said DJI has pretty much no competition right now. But in the tech world, things change pretty fast. Enter the R1 from Skydio, a follow me drone the likes of which we've never seen before. To be fair, the R1 is very different from anything that DJI currently does. But there is one area where the two overlap, and that's visual tracking. DJI uses the front camera, GPS, and some software smarts to know where it's going. The R1, on the other hand, doesn't bother with GPS, instead using a whopping 13 cameras dotted all around it to create a detailed 3D view of the world, allowing it to track you like, frankly, nothing else I've seen before. Before we get to that though, there are some other things worth mentioning. The R1 doesn't come with a controller, like not at all. Pretty much the only way to fly it is to let it fly itself. You can choose a variety of follow modes and adjust its position via an app, but really this thing is meant to be totally hands-free. That said, there is a rudimentary way to fly it with a virtual joystick in the app, but that's mostly just so you can grab some establishing shots so you're just not lumbered with a stack of footage of it following you. Also, you'll have noticed the design is quite different from any of DJI's drones. It's flat and fairly wide, about the size of a large pizza box. This means it isn't the most portable thing in the world, but once you use it, that design starts to make a bit more sense. The prop guard all the way around might look a little goofy, but given that you're not manually controlling it, it stops you worrying about it hitting anything you don't want damaged, like people. And it also provides a logical location for all the cameras needed for the R1 to see where it's going. There's always a certain amount of anxiety about a drone when it's flying itself, but I can honestly say with the R1, that evaporated almost immediately. The first time I took this up, I tested it by walking under a tree and it seamlessly spotted it, lowered its altitude and followed me along the path. The second time I had it follow me sideways and it spotted a signpost sideways on and flew up and over it without missing a beat. At this point, it became a challenge to fool this thing. So I took it through a narrow trail covered by trees and this thing just took it all in its stride. There are conditions that are tricky enough for many pilots, so the fact it can do it on its own is all the more impressive. That's not to say it's faultless. There have been a few times where the R1 lost sight of me, causing it to come to a stop in the air. But often walking back to it was enough to get it to lock on again and continue following. You also have to be mindful of the battery. At 16 minutes to charge, it's not the most enduring drone out there, and when it runs out, it'll stop and land wherever it is, which is less than ideal in certain situations. Although fortunately for me, it hadn't been a problem, but it's definitely something to look out for. Perhaps my favorite thing are all the different follow modes. The R1 can follow, lead, track you from the side and orbit among others. The orbit is impressive as it has to not just track you, but it also has to be aware of potential obstacles coming up while it rotates around you. Watching the R1 handle all that in real time and at speed, in a windy environment even, is truly impressive. All of the following skills aren't just a party trick. It's of course about getting good video. The 4K camera delivers high quality video with only a small amount of horizon warping and the gimbal keeps things nice and smooth. The best part of the experience though is that the R1 starts recording the moment it takes off and there's 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, so no longer are you gonna to forget to press record or to have added a memory card. The companion app is pretty straightforward and even allows you to make quick edits of your footage right after it lands. You can, of course, wait until you get home to your desktop too. Probably the biggest problem with the R1 is its price. At $2,500, you're edging into the territory of DJI's much more versatile Inspire 2. You can even buy two Mavic Pro Platinums and still have enough money for a weekend away. Meaning that if you want the R1, then you really need to want the R1. But without doubt, the R1 is the simplest, most fun I've had with a drone in a long time. The total lack of setup and stress make flying it a dream, and watching it in action is truly impressive. The technology inside this thing clearly doesn't come cheap, but that's the price of progress, we presume.